Tesla Semi Factory is going gangbusters. Yes, it is. And we've got not one, but three different videos to show you some of the different progress. It is uh, very exciting. It is going to be done super quick. Looking at first half of this year, semi production, perhaps as soon as the end of the year. And uh, we're going to go into a whole bunch of depth here. I got my buddy Mark from the Tesla Life to uh, talk me through it. And uh, uh, let's just do it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, oh. We uh, did get a couple requests to move your microphone closer last week. Has that happened? I have moved it closer. We will see if that's any better. I can't hear you. Are you there? Hello? <laughs> we will see. I guess not. I guess we not. <laughs> we will see. So as always, I will show the we'll show clips here, but we're not going to uh, actually play the video because if you want to see it, just go to Zangler's channel. He does fantastic work and there's a whole bunch of stuff on his channel. We don't show because, you know, you got to got to leave him wanting more. I gave it the thumbs up. A reminder, all of you give it the thumbs up. This video, his video, it's free. So what we're looking at here is the stamping pit continuing to get a bunch of work done. Um, it's huge, man. Um, I don't know what to tell you there. There's better angles of it later. Here on the building, we can see them. Uh, they put up some visqueen of sorts, some plastic. Maybe it's the, not visqueen. The sand curtains. <laughs> the sand curtains. <laughs> that is what it is. Um, I can tell you from employees who work there, the sand gets into the buildings. It absolutely gets into the buildings. Uh, this here, we'll have better footage of this in a video that we will show clips from in a second. But this build, building is coming along nicely and uh, the roof, it's just, getting, it's just getting done, man. What always amazes me with these Tesla plants is just the number of loading docks, uh, the mm -hmm. sheer volume that they have uh, for loading and unloading a product. When they were building Shanghai, uh, they had an early iteration of Warehouse on Wheels where all where every loading dock was full all the time because that was the warehouse. And when they were building Texas, they started by putting in that many loading docks and then they erased some of them. Like literally didn't just not use them, but put in concrete forms to fill the hole before uh, taking those out. And you know what? No, let's put in another loading dock. And they, yeah, use this philosophy where rather than have a massive warehouse, they've got the, the beauty of a traditional warehouse is you always know where things are. This item is always on, you know, aisle six, shelf 32. And with a warehouse on wheels, you're like, well, where is everything? It's digital, man. It's all managed. So we can see this coming along nicely. Um, we will be doing a, a little bit more Q&A. Uh, you can see here this area is getting leveled out right in the middle. Uh, and I did have some people say in the comments that last week we'd said that, that the amount of fill that they're bringing in is so extensive. It must be more than just from this one pit and i had pushback on that saying no 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 the pits are definitely that big and maybe that's true uh, but it it's tough to say these are big pits these are big pits so i'm not sure now we're on the third video of the of the excitement here third yes oh second of the of the excitement here and we're looking at yeah we've got uh yeah the semi up on the hill not too much going on here the big Excitement here is we're looking at, uh, and yeah, the roof, it's coming along. This is not the holdup. Getting stuff done inside uh, will happen regardless of whether or not the final layer of the roofing is on. Yeah. And here we can see a wider shot and uh, some of the infrastructure going in. But the exciting thing is uh, we've got this little map here showing some locations, but it's telling you where this is, which is their little substation, ah. which has... What are those? Ah, look at that. Some more Tesla products sitting outside. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. This is the fantastic all-weather Tesla Mega Pack. And you can tell by the size of them, these are not very big. These are, oh no, they're doubles. So these are normal size. Oh, because they're back-to-back, -back, I see, right? Anyway, get the idea. So yeah, they've got power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 12, 14 of them. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So great. We're seeing all the good stuff there. Um, 
that'll be great. All pulling this to a completion, uh, hopefully, uh, in the first half of this year, that they can start uh, pushing some of that power into the plant. Exactly. Exactly. Now we've got the third and final uh, video before we get on to some of the other stuff here. We've got, uh, this is a better shot of the pits. You can see he went in at 4.30 in the evening. And you can see they're closing off these. Uh, ah, yes. Foundation. We saw the walls being built last week. So there we are topping them off. Yes. <clears throat> and there were questions about, uh, you know, is this area going to be filled in? And the answer is probably not. It could be, but it might just be a lateral uh, additional support. Uh, but yeah, you can see that these still have uh, as much progress as they've made. They have a lot left to go. Yeah, so semi-factory, I'm pretty excited. Oh, so much rebar, and you can see just how tiny these humans are. Very small people. Yep. Uh, and I should clarify, they're normal-sized people. <laughs> Do I know that for sure? There was also a kerfuffle this week. Did you hear that Tesla was overlooked? for a $100 million grant to build out the supercharger network, uh, sorry, the mega charger network for the semis. Second and time. Second time. Uh, but what I didn't hear was the reason. TechCrunch, was it TechCrunch? I think had a big article going into uh, depth about what a snub this is without mentioning why. Do we know if Tesla had even petitioned to be the bidder on that project? Do we know who won? Do we know what the criteria was? We don't know all that information, uh, but we do know that uh, some others were allocated funds uh, and nobody, uh, and Tesla did apply for it. Uh, they did submit plans that they had uh, submitted uh, about a year ago um, for nine different charging stations on a, a charging hub run. Uh, but, uh, and that was gonna run from San Francisco to Laredo, Texas on that corridor but um it looks like for whatever reason didn't get that one didn't get it didn't get it well, again well they did get this one tesla to split 100 million award for electric charging corridor in illinois so uh, yeah and this is the second round of what's known as the charging and fueling infrastructure program yeah so they get they're not being overlooked entirely um if this was 100% political. This wouldn't be here. Uh, TechCrunch had the ability to look up all those answers and chose not to because that's work. And you know what's easier than work is guessing and speculating. <laughs> Do some research, please. Uh, I get a lot of people who assume that media is lying to them but only when they hear things they don't like. Mm. TechCrunch is lying to you when they don't do the research. Uh, I get that it fits with some of our beliefs that we already have that Tesla gets the short end of the stick, uh, but that doesn't really help if it's not factual, I suppose. Um, yeah, let me make this a little bigger. So let's, uh, you know what that means? I don't know what time it is. Oh, it's it's picture time, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> Good. Good. We're set for next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. No, let's. Uh... Okay. So the first question is, do any of the renderings show solar panels on the roof? Do you know the answer to that one? Not the renderings I've seen. Correct. The ones we've seen show iWes on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so that's, that's maybe they're spelt out in solar panels. Very thin ones. Mm-hmm. 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 Semi 48 volts architecture. I would hope so. I would hope there's the 48 volts have made it into the semi. Hopefully it has. We don't know. I'm gonna say. Uh, hopefully, and hopefully at some point, but probably not yet because it's not as critical because the amount of copper you're saving when you're building 50,000 of something is not the same as the copper you're saving when you're building millions of something. True. Uh, and 
the suppliers have to get on board. You have to get all the pieces. With that said, fewer units, easier to make the switch. Um, and the efficiency gain you're likely to get is smaller because the total amount of juice you're using to move is greater. Another so, another another piece of the puzzle is that the semi was put together earlier than the Cybertruck, which was the first 48 volt architecture. So that is they true. already they already had the plans in motion way before 48 was something. Those are great points. Those are great points. Reminder, guys, if you have a question, uh, post it. We're here to answer those questions. Apparently, we've got uh, what is the demand percent of total annual semi demand for a semi with government approved unsupervised FSD? Oh, wow. What would the demand if I could sell you an unsupervised class eight truck? What would the demand be? It would be off the scale. It would. I agree. I agree. That would be. Uh, a question I raise, and I will raise this to you and to the viewers at home, you find folks out in YouTube land. Uh, would they sell you FSD for your business or would they lease it to you as a service with a monthly fee? And what would that monthly fee be? Are they going to be are they going to be raking in at a thousand bucks, 50,000 trucks? We're talking 50 million dollars a month in licensing. Yeah. That uh, that's going to be some big coin. Yeah, that's yeah. Half billion a year just on the first year's run of 50,000 unsupervised trucks is a thousand a month. The right number. Is it too high? Oh, because I no. know people who pay 200 a month for premium chat GPT. <laughs> true, true. And uh, you've got to look at uh, what labor is being saved. And what uh, what's the cost of that labor over a year? So comparing somebody that's getting paid sixty thousand dollars a year, compare that to twelve thousand, sounds like a pretty good deal uh, for the company. Yes, you're certainly not getting a tr a, a trucker for twelve thousand a year. You definitely nowhere close. Let alone twenty four hours, which would effectively be, you know, two to four truckers, depending on how much time you're spent uh, is spent at the depot. Now, here's a, an easier one. This one has a definite answer. Uh, how many acres is the semi-factory footprint? Do you know that one? No, I don't. Uh, interestingly, I do. It is here. Uh, additionally, the owners of TRIC agreed to give Tesla 1,000 acres for free, about 35% of the 2,900 acres the company needed. Uh, so that's good. And then there's this bit of confusion where they said Tesla announced it exercised its option to buy additional land adjacent, but that's still some. But they said in addition to the thousand, I thought it was in addition to the twenty nine hundred, but less clarity on that. So it's somewhere between twenty nine hundred and closer to five thousand acres. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And what I would say, though, is now that we've seen the topography a little better and actually let me get back over to that because in this in this one we could see uh, a better this gives you a better idea no somewhere here let me find it gives you a better idea of just how slanted and sloped the property is here maybe yeah you can see it is this is definitely up on a hill from the other other buildings yeah yeah, it, it is. It looks very flat from the air. It is not flat. We are in the rugged foothills around Sparks, Nevada. It is. Uh, yeah. Little, little bit lumpy, I guess you might say. There's a huge difference between that already built uh, facility and the uh, semi factory. The already the already built facility is where they're already building the semi. It's one of those buildings right next to it. That's where the event for the semi rollout happened. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Get back to this a little off topic. I wanted to ask about Giga Shanghai. How do they make almost a million vehicles a year when it only has 5 million square feet? The answer is it doesn't. It's closer. It's over 9 million. Uh, I don't know 
how out of date the 500 or the 5 million square foot figure is, but they'd released a video maybe six months or a year ago that was only in Chinese that I uh, labored to translate over the course of many hours uh, using, uh, using my camera on my phone to do a live translation and then transcribe it and then caption it. Anyway, in that video, Tesla said it was over 9 million square feet. Uh, uh, so did phase two increase it up to 10? Uh, phase one was probably only 3 million. Phase two got it up to eight ish. And then, uh, yeah, so it is, it is about 10 million, 20 separate buildings, all interconnected in phase two. So they're, they're, there's your answer. <laughs> Where will workers live or will they, or will they just need charging stalls? If you know Giga Nevada, there is not a lot around it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's out in the desert. And uh, that was part of the uh, problem with drawing in employees was that uh, it is remote and uh, nobody wants to live <laughs> like in, in that area. Like it, some people do obviously, but to draw in more and more people, you require other things. You require things that uh, people like to do. You know, you've, you've got to have housing. You've got to have grocery stores. You've got to have shopping, retail. All that has to be surrounding it. entertainment, culture. Yeah. Things to do a farmer's market. I don't know. Uh, only 50,000 semi trucks per year to put that into perspective. You're looking at a total annualized us market size of between 220 to 250 K trucks per year. So 50,000 would do 20, 25% of the market. That's not small potatoes. Uh, so yes, there are a lot of people who've looked at that 50,000 figure and said, it's gotta be, it's gotta be higher. Uh, what do you think of the number 50,000? Again, uh, as the, as the, uh, the question indicated, that's 25% of the market at 50,000. Come on. Yeah. Like it, you're not entering a market uh for the first time and expect to what more than quadruple the market like you, you, there's only so much there you're going to take a good portion of it i'm sure i'm sure mac and freightliner are going to notice uh when tesla comes to the the market and uh but but again we've said this before they can expand anytime they want they have room in the factory to go bigger whenever they want and it's it's always better to come in with a reasonable expectation and then overachieve. Well, l let me ask you again, Brian, can the facility be expanded? Absolutely. It can. Absolutely. It can, uh, guys, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch more questions, but those were the ones that rose to the top. Uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it into them comments below Head over to the Tesla life. See what Mark and Casey and Patrick are up to their channel has been growing. It's been fun to see, uh, people are actually watching it, which really makes me sad because then when I'm in the chat, I don't feel as special. <laughs> feel You'll special. always be special, Brian. You'll I always will. be special. I will. Yes. Yeah, everybody else, like, subscribe, please like, please subscribe. It's so much fun. It's way better than not subscribing. It's way better than rewarding the sensational channels who lie to you just to get your patronage. How dare they? Uh, and, every, and everybody else yells. I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.